All you wanna do is talk. I don't need to talk. All I heard is somebody talk. Easily see how many players you need to cut this week. Here are some recommendations to get you started. Meeting your season goal comes with higher rewards. Yeah, we want to go to the Super Bowl again. Drive in the air. And they're going to get this 
Bills beyond the 40 before he's taken down. They go to the empty set there. Five receivers in the formation. Normally, you want to have a running back in the block, but in this case, he's lined up to the right, and he ends up getting the football. A lot of confusion calls defensively, and it turns into a big play. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down.
that decision was. But it takes me back to a number of years ago, a very successful coach in the league had told himself before a playoff game, he's going to be aggressive. No matter what, he's going to be aggressive. And it ran his team into some real problems early, and they got upset in that playoff game. Let's see if this team can recover. Well, that's aggressive in capital letters with glitter, seven underscore. I mean, that's, that's the definition of aggressive. Yeah, you can almost see the cheerleaders doing the be aggressive champ behind him, and he listened to it. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but a guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. What's the plan of attack? You spend all week pumping up your defensive front. Your defensive and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Amir Abdullah, 33 yards. And the Vikings are within a two-point conversion of time this game. Extra point splits the uprights, and this is now a one-point game. Just a four-play drive that time, and it's Amir Abdullah that finishes it off with a touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Here comes Darius Phillips out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Since the offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term compliment? Tyler Boyd, he's going to go. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Tyler Boyd, 78 yards. And the Bengals strike quickly for six points. Evan McPherson for the extra point. And it's up and good. That pushes the lead now to 15-7. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Here's McPherson now to send it away. chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Here's second and ten. Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So after three drives and three touchdowns combined between these two clubs, finally we get a defensive stop. Yes, and welcome to the party, defensive players. I'm glad to have you because yep. for a while there, Thank you. it almost felt like it was 11 going downfield on air. Okay, so to be able to have someone come up, make a stop, now we got a football game going. The Bengals drive about to get going. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. Now maybe they just want to do that again, right? And, that's, and now a rookie spree. Touchdown, Bengals. Jamal Chase with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Bengals are looking good here in the season opener as they're able to extend their lead. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that's the kind of play he would have made as a rookie. Because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more. 
Reading the field, they get into a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. And around the goal line, especially on two point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target to tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some good catch radius, as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. After the main field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Adam Thielen, he gets set to go again with the rest of this offense. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, he oh, tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates, and the Bengals will have solid field position here as they take over at the 45-yard line. Before we came up to the booth, the last thing he said as we were walking off the field, want to play mistake-free football, well, that just went out the window there with a pick. And do you remember what you said to me when we were walking up to the booth after he said that? You're like, oh, fatal last words. Every time we hear that, things tend to fall apart a little bit. That's what we saw there. Didn't get enough on that throw, and it turned into an interception. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. This is caught. It's boy. This well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Press coverage on the outside and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got to step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. The Vikings after it and they get there for the sack. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. Traditionally, as a defense, your number one job, stop the run. But in today's football, it's impacting the opposing quarterback. Make him uncomfortable. And so far, they've not been able to do that. Not at all. He's been really comfortable in the pocket. Three touchdown passes already. So that could be an important first sack if they do want to turn things around. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. And that is incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Fourth and goal, and down by a touchdown, the offense stays on the field. They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. They'll put this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And that's a big pickup on the first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys have the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense is all over it, and they got there to break that one up. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range, so now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. That's why they've been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. A great grab by Chase. Touchdown! Jamal Chase making quite a splash with his second touchdown in his NFL debut. And the Bengals continue to pull away here this first half. So a good start to the campaign so far for them here in week one. Yeah, all the things that you dreamed about in April and May and that you worked on in July and August, getting ready for this. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. 
This is caught out the right flag. And he is not going to get to the goal line. And for the first time here this afternoon, they are thwarted on the two-point conversion. Well, I have to admit, I'm scratching my head a little bit here trying to make sense of what I just saw. Number one, huge lead. Just kick the extra point and be done with it. Number two, if you are going to go for two, just line up and go for it from the two-yard line. Why make it so difficult? That's a long way to go to try and pick up some points. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. Interesting stat line right now. Technically, he's completed four passes, two to his team and then two to the wrong team. It makes you wonder what he's seeing downfield because he has completed two passes to his own team, but the interceptions are troubling. Is he going through the wrong reads, the wrong progressions? Is he getting fooled by defenses? They've got to figure that out over on the sidelines, working on that surface pro to see what they see. A second down run for Abdullah. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. On first down, Abdullah. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. So, CD, big changes for 2021. Of course, last year we had the expansion from six to seven teams in each conference making the playoffs. This year, the headline, the addition of a 17th regular season game. What did you think when you heard the news that this was happening? Well, my first thought, partner, was finally, because we've heard about a 17th game coming for a long time, and now here it is. So the beautiful part about all of it is that 17th game is going to be like these, these interdivision, interconference type games that are going to match up and play out over a four year period. And that's kind of cool. And I was looking forward to seeing some of the matchups that were going to come out of that for that 17th game. And could that be the game that decides a bunch of division titles? They're going right back to Westbrook. A gain of six there on first. Working with a second and four. Again, it's Cousins. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. To throw, Cousins. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Well, that one sailed a bit, but the catch is still made. And he will finally be taken down up at the 48. A big play there just before halftime. But one thing's for sure, they're going to have to come up with something at halftime because he is absolutely roasting them right now. They're going to go through the whole litany of things, changing coverages, you know, what are we going to do to put a man on him? The big thing to me is treat it like a good pitcher treats pitching a game. Change your timing, change your location. So sometimes you're up on him, sometimes you're back. Just change up the looks that he sees and make him just a little bit more hesitant. Burrows throw into the hands of Sample. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. So we've reached halftime here. All right, we will save the week one highlights and apparently get right back to the action here in the third. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. To return it, Darius Phillips. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. Here we go. 
The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. From the gun on third down is Burrow. Open man, it's complete to Higgins. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. We may be looking at the scoreboard. This offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. And this is caught. And he will take it all in for a Bengals touchdown. T. Higgins, 33 yards. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. So this looking more and more like it is going to be a successful kickoff to their campaign as they add on here. And hey partner, you know NFL coaches, they're on the sideline thinking about all the little things that need correcting. But for the most part, they've got to be ecstatic with the way this season has started out. Zach Taylor's made the decision. They'll go for two here. The Burrow's going to look to throw for it. And it's incomplete. But a flag is down here, so hang on. Let's see what we've got. The hit comes late. We saw it. There's your flag. And we know that there's a guideline, right? Ball's gone. You get one step. If you're within one step of the quarterback, you can hit him as long as it's still done legally. But anything outside of that, looks like an extra step was involved. And he's got it. They add on more. A little salt in the wound. Two-point conversion makes this lead even bigger. But I guess when you're hot, you're hot. I mean... I would just go ahead and take the extra point and move on, but apparently they've got something to prove. Almost feels like something was said this week, and they wanted to make sure that they laid it on them in this game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. And yeah, they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he will have a Vikings first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. Football is such a game of tendencies down and distance and on third and inches, third and one. You're thinking, man, the fullback's probably going to get the ball, but when you get to third and two, most of the time that's either the running back or a pass play. So that's a nice tendency breaker by the offensive team there. Hand it to their big guy to pick up a first down. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Throwing Cousins. He goes underneath to Abdullah. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done. 
and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. 76 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. They'll run left with Abdullah. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Coming in, he really liked his chance of having a big year based on a terrific offseason. And runs like that on opening weekend show that he's right. Cousins now to throw on first down. A dump off for Abdullah. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. That play was well covered, just trying to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. Now second and 11 from the 32. Now Cousins. Catch is made here by Irv Smith, Jr. Touchdown, Vikings! Irv Smith, Jr., 32 yards. And the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. Joseph on for the extra point. Now that shaves a bit off the lead. It's now a 23-point game. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. On the return, Phillips. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Bengals drive about to get going. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Back now in Cincinnati. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. The former second-round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try to finish off the game. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Something to watch here in week one of the season, tackling. Because you and I both know that in the preseason, a lot of these guys don't play a whole lot. Plus, the intensity and the speed really ratchets up on opening week. Mixon with a first down carry. Xavier Woods, a former Cowboy, in on the tackle. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy. But they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Third and two, now Burrow. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd with now three week one touchdowns. And the Bengals are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Now, once again, the Bengals will try for two. They'll try and throw for it. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. Personally, I'd rather see them kick the extra point there than to go for two, but it almost feels like there's a story within the story here. I mean, this isn't college. You know, size of victory, that matters in those games. Here, all you have to do is win by one point. That's all that you need. Instead, they go for it, get two. You got some pretty ticked off folks on the other sideline now. 
So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And they knew coming in that this would be a tough place to go in and win a season opener. But this has just been a performance, to be frank, not to be proud of here as they trail big in this fourth quarter. And he completes it to Westbrook. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. here, second and a yard from the 34. Cousins to throw it. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. The Vikings on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. It's complete. Abdullah. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. And there's Sam Hubbard that time in there to bring him to the ground. That right now. That's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he takes it all the way down to the 32. On first and 10, Cousins. A big play there. Cousins to Thielen. 41 yards. And he'll get this one down to about the 20 yard line. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Now a dump off here complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy out of the backfield once, hit him a couple times. Yeah, you're right, maybe they're on to something. And I think a lot of that is simply, if you get it to him in space, more times than not, he's going to get more yardage than you expect out of each play. Well, this is caught. Well, they get one back, picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. Well, this opening game has certainly not gone their way to this point, but, yeah, that touchdown may be a, a glimmer of hope for the long season ahead. And no one in this league likes to talk about moral victories. No one likes to really just say, okay, well, maybe something went right. But you're exactly right about that. A little glimmer there. Maybe they can carry it over moving forward. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is down to 24. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Phillips now from the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Time for Tyler Boyd and the rest of the offense to take over now. Uh, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you can get a trade for him? Bring him over to our team so we don't have to cover him anymore. Because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know if that mid-game trade's going to happen, but good thought. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Mixon. Mixon with a first down and more. And he'll take it to the 43-yard line. 
Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Cincinnati, that'll be a happy locker room as they start this season 1-0. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Glendale to take on the Cardinals. So for Charles Davis... And